Howdy, Possum Patty and little Miss Titi here. And I took my sew to go bag out for a trial run and I started that new project I was talking about with the red material. So come on along. You may remember the fabric that I hauled the other day. I got this lovely red and white polka dot from the Dollar Tree. So this is like a fat quarter. And then I got some different red materials from the flea market a couple weeks ago. And remember I said I had a project in mind for red material. So my idea was to make a ladybug girl. And isn't it funny that Janet Nash had just made a rag doll fairy. It was a rag doll fairy in sort of a keyhole shape. So this was my keyhole pattern. I made this out of a Kleenex box. And I was going to use the red materials to make my ladybug. Instead of a fairy with like butterfly wings or dragonfly wings, this was going to be a ladybug girl with ladybug wings. But the more I thought about it, the more I decided that this is more of a grown-up shape and I wanted more of a girly shape, a younger girl. So the first thing I did was take a piece of paper and I folded it in half and I drew, well, maybe a little larger head and maybe a waist but not too narrow and a shorter skirt and I put legs and boots <laughs> because I was also inspired to do this by a children's book that I had seen and I believe the name of the book was Ladybug and it was a girl and she dressed up as a ladybug. Now the girl in the book had like a little tutu on but I wanted a a larger skirt sort of shape. So I drew the head, the shoulder, not too narrow of a waist, and a longer skirt, legs, and the boots. So when I opened it up, I had my ladybug girl. This is paper. And then I traced her onto something a little thicker. And this is file folder. And you can see I put a face there, but I don't know if I'll go that <laughs> that much detail on the final rag doll. I was just trying to imagine a younger face, maybe with large eyes and freckles. The hair, I haven't decided about the hair yet. So then I used this to cut out two pieces of this unbleached muslin. This is just cotton muslin material, unbleached. And I have two of those with some of the cotton batting in between. So this will be the base for the doll and I will sew fabric on top of this for the skirt and the bodice and the boots. I'll probably leave the legs this color and leave the face this color. Now I will probably work on the front piece and the back piece separately before I sew the two together. And I've already started on the wings. Now let me move this aside. The wings of a ladybug are different than that of a butterfly. They still have two sets of wings but the top set have evolved into a hardened protective case called the Elytron. And that's where you see the spots, right? On the Elytron on the back of a ladybug. So I guess this is true beetles have this. True bugs, beetle bugs. And this hardened case, these are actually wings, but they're hardened for protection and they will spread apart like this and then the softer more delicate wings are underneath and that's what they use to fly with. Now I have this gorgeous hanky from the flea market and I thought I would cut some wings. I do have a wing pattern here. 
So these wings are longer and narrow. So I will cut some of this really pretty delicate fabric to be the wings, the more delicate wings. I might make them a little wider than this. But basically that's going to be the shape. And that is as far as I've got. When I went out the other day, I did stitch these together. Just a running stitch with black embroidery floss. I used all six strands. I'm not sure I'm going to sew everything with all six strands. I just wanted that part to be very dark. And that's going to attach on the back over the more delicate wings. And that's as far as I've gotten, but you can get my idea right now where I'm going with this. I think I'm going to make her boots puffy out of this material too. But her dress, her skirt, and her bodice are going to be a little bit more patchwork. And I'm going to use bits of these different materials. I might sew a mushroom on her skirt. And I did gather up some pinks. I was thinking of putting some pink with this darker red. You see you got darker red little bits on this material or this one. And I know this red doesn't go at all with that red, but you know, that's how it is. <laughs> that's the way I roll. And then I got this pretty one, too. I like that this has some flowers. I might just take a flower and sew that on there. But I also have this other Dollar Tree material. Some butterflies. And some more mushrooms. I'm not going to put a gnome. <laughs> I won't put a gnome on her dress, but I might put a little mushroom. Oh, I've got rainbows. Well, this is not all going to fit on her dress, but I will piece together some of this and slow stitch. Got a little green, got a little purple, got lots of flowers, and I like to mix flowers. You know, like these three materials I think would look really nice. Do I need more polka dots? Maybe I do. I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is, let's see. First things first, you get a lot of ideas in your head, but you have to sort of back up <laughs> and think about what you're doing. So if this is the front, this is the piece I want to work on. So maybe I want to do the face, draw in the face first, and sew that first. <laughs> because if I don't like it, I can take her head off and put a new head on. So I might do that first. And after I got a face that I like, it's going to be simple. Or maybe I'll, I can just draw the face and put a little bit of stitching on it like stitching for the hair maybe. I don't have to stitch all the face, do I? I have these liquid gel pens from Timu and I'm going to use these to draw the face. I tested one out on this little piece of scrap muslin and it's not going to look exactly like that. Now when you write on fabric, you have to realize that it will sort of spread out a little bit. As the ink moves through the material, through the fabric. Now growing up, I always called this material. This was always material, but I think more people know it as fabric. I'm just trying to get the eyes in here, and I can never make eyes the same. And 
and I'm this is like a dark dark blue I guess I could have swatched these before I started okay we'll go with this green some green under the darker eyebrow there okay 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 now some pink and this is for the cheeks And the mouth, I was thinking of a little crooked, mischievous type mouth. I don't know how that's going to go over, but we'll see. And because she's a ladybug girl, I was thinking of red freckles. Well, that pink came out kind of dark, but let's see. And I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it for right now. Those freckles look a little not round. I wonder if white, white would write on here. some white because this is the eyeball and I want the eyeball to stand out I like the way the white gel is running into the the pink I like that so I might have to give that white a couple coats on the eye but that's cute that's cute oops I want to cut a sort of like a foundation of the dress and I'll be sewing things onto it but make sure you turn your pattern over because see the shoulders are a little different And I don't know why, but we're going to leave it like that. <laughs> because I did fold the original pattern in half, so they should be exactly the same. But somehow when I traced it on here, they came out a little different. So, But slightly wonky is possum perfect. And this is the back of the material, so I'm using the back of the pattern. See, so if I turn this over, it's the front of the material and the front of the pattern. And that is what you want. I don't know how much of this you're actually going to see. I'll try and make some of it poke through, but I'll be sewing some things onto it. Oh, you know what? I was going to go down to the basement and look for some red tulle because the little ladybug girl in the book had like a tutu on, like a ballerina tutu. 
and I was thinking of putting a little tool on the skirt of this. Children's book are an excellent source of inspiration because, you know, their illustrations are just so wonderful. These scissors need to be sharpened. I gotta give these to Mr. Possum. Well, that's so much better. Okay, should we give her a sweetheart neckline or V neckline? Oh, she's just a little, a little girl, so she needs a sweetheart neckline. So we give her a round. I could just fold this. And cut. So just make a roundy shape there. Beauteous, beauteous. We could always give her some little pearls or something later if we want. Around her neck. Well, I've cut up a bunch of fun stuff <laughs> to put on the dress. Where's the doll? Here she is. And I'm not really sure what the final product is going to look like. But I'm going to set about just sewing. <laughs> sewing some of this stuff on. I got little bits and pieces. I don't know how that's going to go. But I got this fiddlehead fern that was in with this mushroom. I figured oh, that's got to go on, right? That just definitely has to go on. And I've got trim and pink fabric. And then I've got this very delicate pale pink tool that I might put over that, make it nice and sparkly. So where to start? Okay, we're going to move things we don't need out of the way. I did cut the back of the dress, so that's ready to be decorated. I think I'm going to sew this heart on first. Do I want to put some batting behind it? Hmm. I think I do. And I think what I'm going to do is sew it onto the batting and then trim the batting around. Or I could cut the batting and then whip stitch around the edge and then sew it on. That means I'll have to stitch twice. Of course, if I make that puffy now, do I have to make everything puffy? No, I don't. No, I'll be able to sew that on fine. Oh, well, this needle has some red, some red thread in it, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that to start. Now I'm not going to record all of my stitching because I will probably be here most of the day doing this. Slow stitching is just a very relaxed embroidery. <laughs> you can do it any way you want. any kind of stitching. I really went in pretty far on that, so let's see. And if you go through the loop like that, that just kind of gives the piece a nice little edge. So you just make a stitch and go through the loop. I think there's an official name for this. blanket stitch or something. I don't know the names of all the stitches. Okay, I've work, worked for a little while. I've worked for a little while but made a big mess on the desk because I keep getting new ideas. 
So I, you saw me making the blanket stitch and then I sewed it to the dress by using these little tiny stitches that go off in all different directions. Some people call these seed stitches or they just call them little tiny stitches going off in all different directions. Then I took the flower, this is what it looked like, and I did some stitching on that. And I was trying to see if it would still look something like a flower when I was done, but I think it's okay. And I put three orange French knots in the middle, and then the leaves were orange on the material, so I put two of them there, I just stitched them down. And that's just taken me a while. So, you know, there's no rush, there's no, <laughs> you know, if you're stressing over doing this, it's not slow stitching. It's called slow stitching for a reason. There's no rush in getting it done. Just relax and stitch. Now what I'm doing is I cut pieces of this ribbon or tool and I made slits in it. I know it's going to be hard to see. And all I did was fold over the top a little bit like that. And I'm taking the needle and just doing a running stitch through where I folded it over. And then if you pull that thread, you get a bit of a gather in there. Now, now I'm thinking, um, Now I'm thinking how much I want on there. Do I want to put one more? I did have a third one here, unless TT ran off with it. She tried to run off with this lace. I have an idea for this lace. Oh, I found some pink rickrack. There it is. Okay. Now, I should have put this on before I put that <laughs> rose on, but I am not taking that off. So we'll just sort of make it a drop waist. <laughs> make it a drop waist skirt. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to tie this off so it's the right length to go across there. And then I'm going to take the Rick Rack, this pink Rick Rack, and use that to sew it onto the dress. And then I had an idea. I know she doesn't have any arms. I don't know if I want to add arms. Well, this is all I have so far. And I try to put some of it together there. So I've got her face. I've got the first part of the wings done. I've got the front and the back cut out. And the batting. And the dress for the back. Now that's the back and the front. I've got the heart with the little seed stitches and the blanket stitch around. I got the flower all stitched the orange leaves and then her beautiful little ballerina skirt here that I made from ribbon and I sewed it on with a piece of rickrack. I am still going to put something down here and I am thinking about making little you know like what do they call those little cap sleeves with a little white lace on her shoulder like that and I'm going to put something on the skirt and I have this little ladybug charm that was gifted to me 
So I don't know if this will be a necklace or a little decoration somewhere or maybe just her little friend <laughs> that she takes with her. So that's it for today. So I made quite a bit of progress there and I'll probably do a little bit of stitching tomorrow. And I'm, I'm anxious to see how the wings are going to look. They're just going to be kind of floppy, floppy wings hanging down on the back side. So thanks for coming along today for this little bit of slow stitching and my idea for a project to make some ladybug girls. And I tested out my sew to go bag and everything worked perfectly except I had no straight pins with me. So I need to add some straight pins in there before I take it out again. Happy slow stitching. Bye bye.